It's much easier to integrate a bus uh, than it is to make genuine integration a reality and quality education a reality in our schools. It's much easier to integrate even a public park than it is to get rid of slums. And I think we are in a new era, a new phase of the struggle, where we have moved from a struggle for decency, which characterized our struggle for 10 or 12 years, to a struggle for genuine equality. Note to viewers who are following on Twitter, I just tweeted the full 16-minute speech by Richard Pryor about Martin Luther King. We showed some excerpts of it moments ago, but the full 16 minutes I now, I just put out on Twitter. Tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, MSNBC will present a national day of racial healing and MSNBC town hall live from New Orleans with Joy Reid, Chris Hayes, and Tremaine Lee. Tremaine Lee joins us now from New Orleans. Uh, Tremaine, uh, what are you expecting to cover tomorrow night? Lawrence, thank you so much for having me. Um, as I sit here and, and listen to your segment earlier um, about the legacy of Dr. King and the unfinished work of grateful healing that sits on our shoulders, I think tomorrow will be a great moment for us uh, to sit and have honest dialogue, come together in good faith, to recognize the work that it has been done, but also the work continuing. Here in New Orleans, there are the scars that keloided over from racial slights past. Like in the Treme neighborhood, um, I spent time talking to folks who were wrestling with what to do with this huge interstate that occupies a space in the heart of the black community that once was lined with big old oak trees and black businesses that have been torn up, dividing Treme. And this interstate, this slab uh, that folks call the monster or a monstrosity, um, has been a symbol of structural racism that has undermined the, the health and well-being and vibrance of that community. And so it's so fitting that the day after we celebrate Dr. King's legacy, that the next day we grapple with the unfinished work. So tomorrow, we have a lot of great conversations, important conversations, um, you know, from folks who are operating in good faith to help um, so many of us heal, not just those who have borne the brunt of the victimization of, um, you know, racism and white supremacist violence in this country, but also those who have benefited from it in some way. But good faith folks coming together um, we're not under any impression that we will solve uh, racism tomorrow, that we will be healed tomorrow. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for us uh, to, again, living in that legacy of Dr. King and so many other people who wanted to push America forward to be uh, you know, the best that we can possibly be. And so, you know, folks should expect some of that tomorrow. So uh, how does the, the history of New Orleans uh, help contribute to this subject tomorrow night? Well, well, first, I think part of it is framing what has been lost. In order to heal from something, you have to be wounded. Um, New Orleans and Treme in particular has given us everything you love about New Orleans, right? When you think about the only true American art form, jazz music from New Orleans, the great food that everyone loves, the Mardi Gras Indians that everyone loves. Um, and so now what folks are doing around the interstate especially is um, from the trillion-dollar infrastructure bill, some monies are going to communities um, to help, help them mend. Right, especially when it comes to infrastructure racism. And so New Orleans and Treme and that interstate and the wound that it left, and now a moment where the community is coming together from all corners of the city to try to heal around this interstate and figure out what to do with it. Do you use that money to tear it down? Do you beautify it? Do you leave it up as a symbol of what was, but also, um, you know, contextualize it in the current sense to try to move forward? You know, so this, this community is wrestling as is America.